Hi, welcome to Mathematics with Tom. I am Tom, and today we're going to take a, a continued look, or in this video, we're going to continue to look at the differential operator, and we're going to look at what's called the exponential shift. So let's take a look at that. This in, in our text, this is a part of kind of a supplement to 2.4, and this is the exponential shift. The exponential shift of the differential, or I will just put, I will title it of, uh, whoops, of the differential operator. The differential operator. D. All right, that's our goal today. And the first thing we want to do is we're going to look at what happens when you apply the, the differential operator to a product of functions. And one of those functions will be the exponential. So that what we are going to do is we need another function. We'll do this. Uh, let um, x be a function of t. Well, yeah, well, let's write it like this. Let x be a function of t. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to try. So what we're going to do is find or consider um, consider uh, d applied to e to the a t times our function of x. Okay. So what we're going to do is well notice this. We have we have this is we're taking the derivative of a product. So we're going to take the uh, we're going to take the derivative of the first. So that's going to be a e. Actually, I'm going to write it this way. Um, we're going to just start with we'll take the first. So that's e to the a t times the derivative of the second. So that's going to be um, uh, we'll just write it this way. I'm going to leave it. Use my operator d x plus then I'm going to take the derivative of the second, of the first, a e to the a t times the second, x. And then let's factor. So I'm going to factor my e to the a t. So it's e to the, um, oh, I'm sorry. I need to come back. Let x be a differentiable. That's important. Differ and uh, a differentiable function of t. All right, so then if we continue on, and now I've got um, d x plus a x. And you could go one more step if we wanted. Um, we're going to need to keep that idea in mind, but remember that d is a derivative, but it also works as an operator. You can factor it just like you would like to. So I'm going to write this as, not that, I'm going to write this as e to the a t uh, d plus a parentheses times x, like that. Now, let's try this again. So let's come over here. All right, now let's take the second derivative. So we're going to take the second derivative of e a t x. So in order to do that, let's use what we already have done. If this is d squared is d times d e a t x. Well, this piece right here we already found. So this is d times, and if I use my previous result, let's put it up here. This is um, big parentheses and a parenthesis d plus, oh no, it's e, the a t times d plus 
a x. Okay, well, we're in the same situation now, so let's take the derivative. So I start with the first, e to the a t, then times the derivative of this second piece, so that's going to be d applied to d plus a x. Then we take plus this derivative of the second, a e to the a t times the second, d plus a x. Now, now I've got a common factor here of d plus a and a common factor of e to the a t. So let's factor all those at once. I get e to the a t, a d plus a, d plus a, oh, and I've even got an x times uh, I'm going to put that x last. Notice that if I factor out the d plus a's, there's a d plus an a, and then x. But this we can write as e the a t d plus a squared x. Okay. Let's do that one more time. We're going to try it one more time. That should be enough. Let's try the third derivative of e a t e to the a t x. Well, that's just d applied to d squared e a t x. Well, that's d times Oh, here's our, here's our second derivative right here. So let's use that. That's e a t d plus a squared x. Now let's do that again. This becomes the first e to the a t times the derivative of the second d times d plus a squared x plus, now we take the derivative of the first, a, e, the a, t times the second, which is d plus a squared x. Oh, there it goes. But look at, I've got another common factor. So I'm going to factor out on the left. I have an e to the a, t, so let's factor that. E A T. And then I've got a D plus A squared. Let's factor that. D plus A squared. And then, oh, and look at what's left. I have this. I have a D and I have an A, another D plus A. D plus A. And then my X. And we can clean this up one last line as e a t d plus a cubed x. Now, you can continue this on. If we were to continue these out, we could say that d, the nth derivative of e, the a t x, is simply e a t, e a t, d plus a to the nth power times x. Now, let's try an application. So I'm going to come over here. Let's try an application of this. And here we go. Uh, let's find the third derivative of e to the t sine of t. That's what we're going to do. So how do we do that? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> how do we do that? We come back over here. We come back over here and look at what we've got. Here we've got our e to the at. Let's just notice this. So in our problem here, our e 
or e to the at is e to the, I'm going to write it 1t, and, and here, our function of x, our function of x is the sine of t. So, and, so our function, we could write it as x, or you could write it as x of t. That's just the, that's our sine of t. So let's use, now, a, a great exercise would be to say let y of t equal this, and sit there and calculate three derivatives, or, uh, or the third derivative, or apply what we've got right here. So let's just write this out. This is, so we can say that the third derivative of e to the t sine of t is equal to e to the at, that's e to the t, times, it says the differential operator plus a, but a in our case is 1, so plus 1 cubed times the sine of t, that's our x of t. Now here's the clever part, if, if you don't remember, you can expand this using the binomial theorem, and if you don't remember that, you can just foil for a while, or multiply and distribute, and multiply and continue distributing, but this is also the same as um, e to the t times, it factors, it multiplies out into d cubed plus 3 times d squared times 1 plus 3 times d to the first power, 1 to the second power, that's 1, plus 1 cubed, that's 1, times the sine of t. Oh, we're, we're so close. We're so close. Watch. This is the same as same. Um, before I go on, let's do this. If I take the derivative of this, or d sine t, that's cosine of t. If I take d squared sine t, well, the first, the first d, the derivative of sine t is cosine t. The derivative of cosine t, this is minus the sine of t. And finally, if I wanted d cubed, d cubed sine of t, that just means I apply d to d squared. Well, d squared is minus sine of t, so this is equal to minus the cosine t. So let's finish our problem here. I'm going to finish our problem. I'm going to move this board back. I'm going to move this board out. Okay. And look at what, let's take a look. Uh, we're going to pick up this piece right here. So our d, our third derivative of e to the t sine of t is equal to e to the t times, e to the t times our third derivative of sine of t minus cosine t. Minus cosine t plus 3 times our second derivative, that's minus sine of t, so plus 3 times minus, I'm going to, let's do this, let's do this, let's write minus 3 sine t plus 3 times d of sine t, d sine t is cosine t plus 3 Cosine t, oh, we're just going to squish it in, just going to squish in a plus sine of t, plus the sine of t. And all we, all we need now is to combine some like terms. So this is e to the t times, I have 2 cosine t, 2 cosines of t, and oh, here's... Uh, signs. I have minus 3 signs here, but here's plus 1, so I have minus 2 sine t. And that's how we can apply that, but it extends even further, and that's what I want to show you next. 
The other extension is this. Another extension is, let's do this problem again. This is a clever problem. E to the t sine t is, this is equal to the real part, the real part of d cubed e. If I use Euler's identity, this is e to the 1 t times e to the i t. So I can write this as e to the 1 plus i t. e to the 1 plus i t. So let's try that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find, we're going to find this, we're going to find that, and then We'll, we'll do this using the properties that we learned the other yesterday. So let's find this. Uh, so we want the d cubed of e1 plus i t. All right, so if we apply this, if we, ha we said yesterday that this just becomes your exponent squared. So this is going to be 1 plus i cubed e to the 1 plus i t. Now, we need to utilize our binomial expansion. We said this is becomes 1 cubed, which is just 1. We'll just do the math. We could do this. This is 1 cubed. It says, then you go plus 3 times 1 squared times 1i to the first, 3i. Then it says you take 3 times 1 to the first power, that's 1, times i squared, so that's going to be a minus 1, plus i cubed. Well, i cubed is going to be, oh, it's going to be, a, we'll just write it this way, a minus i, minus i, e to the 1 plus i, oops, t. Okay? Now, now let's do one more thing. Let's kind of clean up what I've got. I'm going to have to come over here a bit. This is equal to, um, if I clean up my i's, here I have a 1. Here I have a minus 3. That's going to be a minus 2. Here I have a 3i. I subtract an i. That's going to be a plus 2i, and then let's expand this. This is the same as saying e to the t, and then if we apply Euler's identity to the next part, which is e to the i t, e to the i t, this is cosine of t plus i sine of t. Okay, we're almost there. I'm going to scoot this board back. I'm going to pick up right there. So I'm going to take this piece, and what we're going to do is we're going to distribute. We're going to distribute this. So I'm going to take minus 2. We'll fact, let's factor out that e to the t right off the bat. So let's do that. Equals e to the t minus 2 cosine of t. So let's write that minus 2 cosine of t. Then I have a minus 2 i sine t minus 2 i sine of t. And I just, I just had a, a recollection. I made a mistake. Uh, this, is not, this is not the real part. This is the imaginary part. So let's come back here and make a little correction. This should be the imaginary part. The real part would be if I had a cosine, I have a sine here. Uh, let's keep going though. Then I have a 2i times cosine of t plus 2i cosine of t. And then I have a 2i times i sine of t for a minus 2 sine t minus 2 
sine of t. And then we said our answer, our answer was the imaginary components. So let's take a look and see where those are here. Um, that's a real part right there. That's an imaginary component. This is 2i cosine t. It's another imaginary component. And so we can say that d cubed e to the t sine of t is equal to e to the t times minus, we'll write it in, we usually write cosines first. How about 2, that's an s, 2 cosine of t minus 2 sine of t. And if I don't look behind me, but you can, this should match this answer right here. And does it? It does. Look at that. And that's how we can use our exponential shift of the differential operator. All right. Thanks for watching.